In this era, I could hardly take a bad picture. And all my clothes were fabulous, and I loved them, and I spent pretty much all my time naked. Hi, Vogue. We're going to look through my looks. All right? I'm ready. I'm gonna start answering questions without someone asking. Well, I don't remember exactly where we were in this picture, but this outfit that I have on, it's red, white, and blue, and I made it to go to England. So what stands out to me in this picture is Sonny's willingness to let me do anything to him. He would wear anything that I put him in. And he's wearing his bobcat. I wanted it, I thought it would fit me, it didn't, so Sonny got it. But I thought he looked really handsome in it. Well, this is a big jump, isn't it? The big jump was I designed these and Bob Mackey designed that. That's a big jump. This was gold. I'm holding on to something. Oh, I remember. It was kind of like a dolman sleeve, you know. It was a jacket, but it was kind of dolman sleeve. And it was Bob, obviously. And this was a photo shoot for the TV show. I was the first woman. When you're married, you can kind of get, you know, you can get away with stuff. And also, everyone thought that it was I Dream of Jeannie. And I don't think the censors were, you know, digging that deep. So, yeah, it was me. Reminds me of how fabulous my hip bones were. This cover, Richard Avedon once told me, you're never gonna be on the cover of Vogue. The man who picked the covers was named Doc and he couldn't find any covers, and so he went to me as a last resort. But I really don't look like me, okay? Okay, this dress. This dress was the cover of Time Magazine, and it was also what I wore to the first Met Ball. And there I am at the Met Ball with me, Bob Mackey, and my best friend, Paulette. This guy came up to me. I don't know if he was a photographer. I don't remember what he was. And he said, how do you feel being naked? And I said, I feel just fine. If you look at it, it looks like it's stuck to me, and that's because it is. I think it was shocking for a lot of people because it was souffle. The dress was made out of souffle, which was a material that was outlawed in America. You could only get it in France, and Marlena Dietrich had her beaded dresses made on it. And so when you put it on, Bob sprayed it with like a little hand sprayer, and it just sticks to your skin. So it looks like you just, your skin's beaded. So I think people were a little taken back. Sonny and I were doing Carol Burnett. Bob did everything for Carol Burnett, and we met, I think, on, on La Brea, La Brea or La Cienega, at one of the houses, you know, that you go to be fitted. And he walked in, and he was so handsome. And he said he was very happy that I was little because he thought I was huge. You're kidding, right? I don't like this dress, and I don't like the hairdo, and I don't like anything about it. This was um, me with my smirk. First, Bob just made the pantsuit, and then he put the war bonnet on. We were on the road, we went on the road. This outfit is great. This is one of my favorite outfits. This is a picture with Diane and Elton. I was still with Sunny when I had it, so it must have been in the early 70s. And I'm in the same outfit, and Diane, this big thing is yellow, lots of yellow ostrich feathers. And Elton is just, Elton. Diana was pregnant, and I was in that same outfit, only without anything. I don't know where we were, but we used to hang out a lot. Diane was so beautiful. This was an unfortunate outfit. I wore it on TV, and I had a knife on that gold, on that silver chain, what well, was white gold, and you couldn't tell that you could see through it, but I was kind of ahead of my time, so whatever. This one, this flame dress was one of many. This was the beginning, this one with all these pieces, these little dangly pieces. It was for something on the, on the show, on the share show, and um, whatever, it was all about flames and sex. And this picture is all about Egypt and sex. And this picture is all about spandex and sex. I had these boots forever, and I don't know, the, Pose is just what you do when you run out of things. Okay, this is me with a Charlie Tweedle hat on, got an Aspen, and in my leotards, and I, it was on my lunch break, and I was going to 
Maud Frison. The paparazzi came from nowhere and I just did that. And I'm holding some shoes in my hand that we walked into this store and the man said, oh, if they fit you, you can have them for 25 bucks and they fit me. This next one is naked, but not really. Well, this one was pretty much naked. Okay, so this is my skunk hairdo. And it was the one time that I didn't wear a wig. And I love these earrings. I don't remember where I got them, but I love them. And I had that t-shirt studded. This picture was for a friend of mine, Arlene, and she had a jewelry line. And this was just showing her waist chains. My fabulous body. This is one of my favorite, favorite outfits. I came to Bob with an idea, and I said, I want to have a mohawk, and I want to do something that's not actually Indian, but I want it to be so over the top that it's next week. He came back with this, and the beautiful shawl was the most fabulous cashmere, and I loved that. I loved the whole thing, and my boyfriend, God bless him, um, Joshua Dawn and Joshua was so nervous because I kept saying, Joshi, do you care what I'm wearing? Can anything be too much? He was like, no, no, I'm fine with it. And I walked out of my bedroom, he almost passed out. I had the idea mostly because the Academy didn't really like me. So I thought they hated the way I dressed and I had young boyfriends and they just thought I wasn't serious. So I came out and said, as you can see, I got my handbook on how to dress like a serious actress. Okay, this is, look, I won the Oscar. I didn't really have a speech because I could never imagine. First of all, it was a comedy and it's hard to win for comedy. And secondly, I just thought I'm never gonna get this and why would I? I just thought this will be a beautiful dress. And my favorite thing about it was the, the shawl. I lost one of my earrings walking up the stairs and said, oh shit, and I think you can read it in my lips. And the shoes were so killing me that I had to take them off. I was standing next to Michael Douglas, standing on my tiptoes. Whoa, well, this is not Bob. This is, oh, I can't remember her name, but she was really nice. The proportions were not exactly right, but it was pretty good, pretty good. I love the idea of it, and I love everything, but right where it goes to the crotch, it's just not right. My style was pretty much what I was feeling at the moment, no matter what anybody else was doing. I just didn't pay too much attention. And this is the Believe era, and boy, nothing goes. It's kind of a mishmash, except the top little thing. We were doing the video, and I saw this boy sitting on the stairs of the trailer, and he was kind of weaving these little monofilament things, you know, kind of plasticky things, and he was weaving them, and he was weaving small ones. And I looked out and I said, could you weave a big one? And he said, yeah, and so I decided to put it on my head at the last minute. But this whole other thing is a mess. This is one of my boy did you get it wrong looks. I love this outfit. I hate the, the top piece. It's just too big for me. King Kong should be wearing that hat. This is what I wore to the Met Gala. And I had another outfit to wear, but at the last minute, I just thought, what kind of words can you say on this show? I just thought, fuck it. I don't want to wear anything. So this is what I came in, except I had a big, fluffy, puffy coat that my friends at Come Hearts made me. And so I've had these jeans forever. They are patched over patches, and so I love them. They're not particularly attractive, but I don't really care. That's it? Okay. I don't really want to close it on that. It was nice for the moment, but I don't really want to do that. So I was told to close the book, and I take direction well. And that's all you get. <laughs>